Hello everyone, I'm going to go ahead and show you exactly how to use CarPlay. Now obviously I'm going to be in my car in a second, but before we get too far, this is going to be a pretty in-depth tutorial on how to use it. If you're if you used CarPlay before, then obviously you're you know, if you use CarPlay before, then this video is going to be boring. But if not, the first thing I'd recommend doing is making sure you have CarPlay enabled on your phone. So you want to go and get into your settings panel on your iPhone. As long as your iPhone has been updated for a little bit of time now, you should be able to have CarPlay. And all you want to do is go ahead and type in CarPlay, and you'll basically see CarPlay come up. It's within the general settings. You want to go ahead and open it up. And as long as you see this panel, you're pretty much good to go. If you don't see it, your device may be too old to support CarPlay. You will also have to have a car or system within your car with a screen that does support CarPlay as well. Majority of the cars nowadays have it. You can also install it separately within your device as well. You know, if you have a Best Buy around you, you can get it installed for like three or four hundred dollars as well. So and that's pretty much it. Now let's go. So we are back in the car right now. I do have an external microphone, which is just my iPhone that I'm recording audio from. So hopefully it's not too bad. But regardless, we have CarPlay set up right here. So you should be able to see the entire setup and the entirety of your iPhone as soon as you plug it into a CarPlay acceptable car. Like I mentioned, this car didn't have it originally, but we did add it separately within, you know, we went to a Best Buy and got it installed. It was very easy. So essentially, when you first plug in your iPhone to your CarPlay supported system, whether it's, you know, supported with an iPhone charger or whether it's supported wirelessly, it will come into a panel that looks like this. Now, this is actually my first time plugging in this specific iPhone to CarPlay. So this is something you should see. I didn't set this up yet. This is exactly what it should be when you go ahead and plug it in, something along these lines. Now, you will see on the left bar right here, we have the time up here. We have the Do Not Disturb mode right there, Google Maps or Apple Maps, Music, iMessage. Now, these apps will come and go depending on which applications you actually use. And this little toggle right here actually indicates the maps that you're using. So in stock, it actually supports Apple Maps, but this could change to something like Google Maps or Wise or Waze, whatever it's called, depending on which ones you use. Now, up top, it shows you no upcoming destinations. If you have Google Maps or Apple Maps, if you're going somewhere, it'll go and show up right there. And this is going to be your music toggle as well. Now, that should stay pretty consistent. Now, if we go ahead and look at the bottom left, this is our All Applications Manager. So if we go and click here, you'll basically come into your applications and all the applications that are acceptable within CarPlay. So you can go ahead and basically get into, you can swipe through. Now, this CarPlay, you know, this specific system, it's actually pretty cheap. It's not even that expensive. And this actually supports CarPlay fairly well, and it's actually pretty decent. So for this to be as smooth as it is, I mean, this is very slow, but for it to be as decently smooth as it is, that's actually pretty decent. Now, you can always come back to your main panel by swiping through just like that, and you'll basically come into this specific page. Now, if we go ahead and click on the three dots up here, we can click on the, you know, this specific do not. Now, what we can do here is we can go ahead and basically get into our applications that we want. So let's say we wanted to go ahead and get into Apple Maps. Well, we can go and click on Apple Maps like this. Now, most of the time, it should show us the maps that we normally would use. And at this point, you can go ahead and maneuver through and type in whatever you want to. It looks like Maps is not available because, like I guess, I don't have it enabled on my iPhone. But essentially, if you ever get into this panel and you're trying to figure out how you can come back to your main panel, well, that bottom left corner is exactly what you want to click on. So go and click on the bottom left corner right there. And that's going to bring you straight back into your Maps panel. Now, what you can do here is you can go and click on another application. So let's say we wanted to go ahead and bring on, you know, Apple Music, for example. Well, we can go ahead and bring up Apple Music just like this. And at this point, we can go through our standard library. It's already compatible with your phone. So whatever is basically on your phone is going to show up here. You can click Playlist. You can open a playlist here. You can click on Radio, and you can go and see the radio there. But like I mentioned before, if you want to hop out of here, you can always click here, and you can come back to your main page. But let's say, for example, we were in this application, and we want to go back into another app. Well, we can always sweat, you know, quick toggle right here. So we can quickly toggle back into Google Maps or Apple Maps right there. We can quickly toggle into Apple Music right there. And we can even quick toggle into iMessages. So right now I don't have any iMessages set up. But essentially what we have the ability of doing is actually using iMessage straight within. Now I don't know if we can type, but we can go and try it out. So we can go and click here. Now it will pop up Siri. So you can go ahead and basically talk to Siri and let Siri know, hey, this is, you know, send a message to so-and-so. And that'll go ahead and toggle off Siri that way. Now there's some other ways to toggle off Siri too if you're really into it. If your, you know, system, if your car system has a dedicated voice message button, you should be able to see it within your car. And if you click on that, it should also pop up Siri that way as well. If we go and come back here, we'll come into this panel. Let's go back into our application panel. So here we have the standard applications as always. We have phone, so we can open up phone and we can call people. We can click on recents, we can go on the keypad and we can actually quickly call people this way too. 
So this is another awesome thing that we have the opportunity of doing it. We can type in the phone number, whoever the phone number is. We can call them this way. We can also go back and we can also go ahead and go back to our application manager. We can go straight into music or maps this way too. We can go into now playing. So whatever music application we're using, whether it's Spotify, SoundCloud, Apple Music, whatever it is, you should be able to see a now playing option that's going to show you right there. You can get into podcasts and audiobooks. I don't know how many people are doing you using that. And we have the calendar application too. Go to our calendar app and come into this panel. Hopping back out, what we can do here is swipe to the side. Now you will see Spotify. This is a great application. This is my go-to music app. So what you can do, and one thing that I constantly see people see, is if you look at the top left, you'll see that these applications have been moving. So it's no longer just Apple Music and the other app. They're now consistent to what we're using here. So that's really, really cool. You'll basically be able to see all your whole entire Spotify playlist and everything you've done. And this is where I go to anytime I use an application for music on my phone. It is always Spotify. And this is my go-to app for sure. So that's another thing I recommend doing, taking a look at Spotify or any other music app. And what's really cool is whenever you're playing a music or song or whatever, let's say I was playing this song, if I made my way back to my home screen, it's not going to show Apple Music here. It's going to show Spotify. And you can quickly poop. And you can quickly toggle back into Spotify by clicking onto that. And that's another really cool thing. Now, finally, I actually want to go ahead and show you all the settings application within CarPlay. So there's a lot more customizability you can actually do within CarPlay, which is really cool. So if we hop into our settings application, we have a ton of different things. So first of all, since iOS 15, we have the capability of driving focus. This is essentially a driving focus mode. If you want to enable it, you can do it, but it's kind of a pain. And if you don't know what you're doing, then I'll just recommend not even messing with it. Hopping back out, we have the appearance. So we can click on appearance and we can have it to either always dark or automatic. I kind of prefer automatic because sometimes the automatic one looks better, but sometimes dark looks better too. So we'll just keep it like that. Hopping back out, you can see we have different wallpapers we can choose from as well. So if you want to change the background, you have the opportunity of doing so. Some people just prefer it one way. Personally, if you want to go and change it to this, you can set it up to this too. I may just set it up for this for the pop purpose of this video. Hopping back out. We have Siri and suggestions, which I talked about before. You should be able to say or see or say, hey, Siri or anything like that. And those little pop ups should come up as well. You can always show album art of your specific thing that you're listening to for music. And that's it. Those are the settings. And that's actually CarPlay. It's very easy to use. It's not super complicated and it's actually very intuitive. And what's really great, as I mentioned before, is with future iOS versions. This includes iOS 15 that just came out, iOS 16 that's going to be coming out that's already in a beta, and then iOS 17, 18. Almost every single version of software that Apple has made, they do a tremendous job at actually making sure that your specific CarPlay gets updated. Even within CarPlay for iOS 16, Apple has made tremendous improvements within CarPlay. So this makes me really happy to see what's going to be happening in the future. And so I will tell you with CarPlay right now, this is a very solid option for those of you who actually want to go ahead and pretty much drive with all their information and drive, you know, with a humongous system in their car like, like this. It's really cool. It's about to rain right now, if you guys are able to tell. But luckily, we're at the end of the video. With iOS 16 CarPlay, if your car supports essentially the more complicated CarPlay with a bunch of screens all over the place, CarPlay will basically be able to take over your whole entire car. I have about like two screens in this car, but they're very small. And this one is the only third-party one I put here. And even this one supports CarPlay fairly decently. So. Hopefully by now you have a decent understanding of how to use CarPlay. Again, it's nothing complex. If you've been able to use your phone, you should be able to use CarPlay for the most part. If you have any other thoughts or questions, please let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, that would mean so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.